Welcome back to our maintenance videos. In this part two, we rebuild a halyard swivel, take our life raft for service, rebuild all three hydraulic furling motors with new seals and bearings, make some modifications to the bow thruster and some modifications to the mast top, and finalize the reinstallation of the aqua drive and the PSS shaft seal. I've got the cutter swivel here. I couldn't finalize it because I needed some of these little buffers that go in here. In fact, I needed three, one, two, three. And I ordered three, and they gave me this. Three meters. Better too much than too little, eh? So let's see if I can remember how it goes. Good old Selden blue grease. It's enough to put the ball bearing. Oh, well, actually, that can sit in there right now, anyway. So I've divided the ball bearings up to make sure I have equal numbers. So let's see if I can do this on camera. Let's put that into there. Lift this up a little bit and slip the balls in like this. That seems to be the way it wants to be done. Okay, one more. Come on, in you go. Bingo. Okay, so do we have any gaps around there? Nope, that feels very smooth. Okay, without dropping those, let's just sit that on there. Don't move. Put some grease in this one. So this now goes in car like this. And then this side's dead easy because you just drop them in. Drop them in. In you go. This goes on here like this. Then, before we lose the whole shebang, we get this on. It's never that easy. Put that first little bit in, the rest just follows around like a spiral. Voila! Okay, so this ring goes on here. Like that. And finally, this is the new piece I got. What was that? So like $180 euros? Piece of plastic. Now the nuts are in there. I can put these bolts in here. And two. Talk them up a bit. Perfect. All ready to slide onto the extrusion. Lovely. Well, oh, I just got to replace the sticker. Skateboard. Every boat should have one. Okay. Ooh. It worked. That was easier than I thought. That's the life raft in. Now it's going for service tomorrow. Rain is a coming, so we're off to Baltimore with a pickup to take the life raft. We've arrived to Van Brothers Marine Safety and we are going to send the life raft into here. It looks like a good quality establishment. Wish I could be there to actually watch it because of COVID. They won't let me be there when they open the life raft. Beautification in the engine room is finished. I've put the water maker and air conditioning pumps back in. Anyway, I'm quite pleased with the way it looks. I was joking with one of the other day that we should put some blue lights underneath the engine. You know, some people have blue lights underwater. Well, I think I just have blue lights under the engine. What do you think? I've just put the CV joint in place temporarily. Nicely serviced and painted. New PSS seal there, brand new from one end to the other. That was a bit like servicing a broom by replacing the handle and the head. I replaced it all in the end. The AquaDrive has come back from Authority Marine Propulsion where they changed all the seals. They've redone the rudder seats. They've given me a new set of bolts and washers, which is good actually, because it seems like before these monster washers here were missing. I'm a bit perplexed why Halberg Rassi didn't put these washers on. 
Right, now I've got to get this heavy monster down here into those holes. So if you hear some swearing or my back goes snap, you know what's happened. And I mustn't lose any washers or bolts. It is indeed bloody heavy. Will it fit with a shaft there? That's all I need, just one. One bolt, one, one bolt, that's all I need, thank you. Oh, surely it can't be that easy. Before I put it in, I've coated the outside of it completely with this lather coat. I love leather coat. I'm a bit of a fan of it, I have to say. It was a bit liquidy when it went on, but now it's it's like this sticky stuff, which is, um, it's good. It, it protects it from rusting. So I was getting a bit ahead of myself there, as usual. I went back to look at the instructions, sorry, instructions, and I realized that this needs to go in here first, like so. Now, it does say in the instructions, then it needs to be cleaned with acetonic detergent. Why can't they just say acetone? I guess what they're meaning is just degrease the damn thing because it has to grip that shaft very, very strongly, obviously. Okay, so I've got to get this ring in here. I've cleaned it with acetonic detergent. I'm just going to give it a little gentle persuasion. Okay, I've got a bit of decorative teak now. Okay, that seems to be right down now. Now the shaft seal goes in. Eric's 456510. That's the shaft seal in. So now we can put it in and push the shaft in. Like I say, I was getting ahead of myself a bit last time. As usual, measure twice, do it once. 19 centimeters. Okay, you sit there and watch the shaft for me. That's a difficult job, I know, and I'll go outside and do the hard work and pull the propeller out, all right? Tell me if it actually moves. Okay, everybody, I'm pulling the shaft. Hey, how come you never called me to say it was coming out? I could have pulled that all the way to Pennsylvania, you. Oh, yeah. Come on, in you go. Chop, chop. Okay, now unfortunately this is all I can do for now because I need a special molly coat for these threads. Um, I guess it's just anti-seize. But to be able to do all the stuff inside there to actually hold the shaft, I definitely need this molly coat grease. Come on guys, look, you forgot to tell me I need to put a washer on there. I mean, what's the point of even watching if you don't help me? Long threads. I could have probably done with cutting these bolts a bit bloody shorter, right? Okay, it's in. Um, I'm gonna push the prop shaft up. And let me know when it comes through. That would be very good. Did you see it go in? Cooler, it's in. Yep. Fully through there. Now what I've got to do is line up this. First of all, I'm going to take out the carbon piece here so that I can see that the bellows is lined up centrally. There we go. Okay. We need to get that flat spot. Must go exactly over here. It can't go into the bellows because otherwise it can harm the bellows. So it's probably okay, but I need to measure that properly and get that line. The old rotor on. Now I'm just doing like a shuffling act because the shaft that goes into the aqua drive has to be spotlessly clean. And then next will be the motor for the mainsail furler. So I have all the parts here, the bearings, newer rings. I got a new shaft because the last shaft here, very pitted. So previously, this old shaft came out the top of the motor like this and when this is on here there's a big gap around there which let all the water in which was pretty pathetic right and that's what caused all this damage around the aluminium at the top here on this shaft 
which then presumably let more water in because it got past the seals. So this time I'm going to put this 40 mil V ring on there and just wanted to check with a dry run, dry before I grease everything up, that it fits. Now just bear in mind this isn't Formula One, this is going to be turning pretty slowly and not very often so it's not going to get hot or anything. And that looks like it makes a very good seal there now for any water that comes down on top, which previously just used to go inside. So I think that should be quite an improvement. Here I'm heating the motor housing before I install the upper taper bearing seat. The heating allows the seat to go in much easier. Perfect. So just have a look at this. We've got a bearing on this end that sits on here. The weight of this sits down on the bottom bearing, so the shim is on the bottom here. This is locked to the shaft, bearing on the top. That's the bearing seat I've just put in. Uh, seal around here. And then we have the wiper seal on the outside that goes on the top. Okay, I hope you're all paying attention because there's gonna be a test later. Let's just do a dry around with this. See the curves on the cog is exactly lining up with the hole I'm looking through so that means the shims are good. So a little bit of teff gel around here to when look at that nice new ring. Okay perfect. Then I drop the old blue Loctite because I don't want these coming undone. Maybe you've got something round like this you should always just do the bolts up sequentially. Now we're getting Tef gel coming out, so we know that's got a good sealant around there. Okay, let's do the side. The side the motor goes in. Okay, and the hydraulic motor goes in for the last time, I hope. In you go. Line up the screws. Lock tight. Now this is where I look down at the parts and see that I've got some parts left over. Luckily, the only parts I've got left are ones that still need to go on the outside. With the Tef gel on there, it'll be an absolute breeze to get this off next time. Even if it's five years time. That's it finished. All nicely cleaned up. Looks pretty much like new. It just needs a new label there, but I'm going to put that on after it's on the mast, just in case I damage the label. So just as a final test, we put the winch handle in here and just feel, yep, we get movement, nice smooth movement. The winch handle being the emergency furling. Obviously we'll have to try it with the hydraulics, but um, that looks pretty good. One done. This is the bow thruster tube. And after all these years of faffing around with these stupid bloody bars that used to come across here, the screws used to pull out randomly. If you got rope through the bars, and they still went through the bars, it was a nightmare getting your hand in there to get out of the propeller. So I am removing the bars, and I'm going to fill these holes with epoxy. So I'll put on time lapse, and you can watch me sand it down. So I've cleaned all the anti-foul off of these holes here. You might think I've gone a little bit too far, but I want to get some uh, epoxy uh, base coat on here after I've filled in the holes. And the grey is the base coat, so I don't want epoxy adhering to anti-foul. Meanwhile, I also cleaned up the bow thruster quite well. And now I'm just going to very gently go in here. Not too deep. So I've marked off the bit with a little bit of masking tape and I don't want to go any deeper than that. Be very careful because bits grab and then off they go in. That's it. Lastly, I'm just going to go in with the countersink head just to give it a nice edge. Now using some of the 610 epoxy, which is pretty 
Good stuff, I like it. Squeeze it out like this and mix it up. I don't need much here, just enough to fill those holes. Just twisting the screwdriver around, making sure that the proxy gets wetted on all the sides. I just put a bit of tape over the end of each one, squished it down, and then just smoothed off any excess epoxy. This morning we take off the tape and we have one nicely filled hole. Don't even need to fill those, they are solid. Oh yeah, it's come out very well. Worth the effort. Good morning! Yesterday I did a whole bunch of time-lapse filming only to find out rather than making a time-lapse video it made 5,000 still pictures. So I'll try to document this properly while we do the Genoa motor. We've got all the pieces here to do the vertical section. This is the motor housing, this is the lower housing, this is the swivel on the top. Essentially this goes through here and this bolts on the bottom and we have a V wiper ring that wipes around the top here just to keep the uh, water from going in the top. Now the challenge of these things is getting these bearings in because they are such a tight fit. So I'm putting these in the fridge and then I heat this up to expand it and then they seem to slot in okay. I've already got the oil seal in the top of there and I've got the oil seal in the very top of here and I've got to get one of these bearing seats into there too so likewise I'll put that in the freezer and I'll heat this to make sure that it slots in nice and easily so these bearings are tape bearings they go one either side of the main cog here take the load they're basically differential axles from Land Rover. That's what they seem to be anyway. So I've checked everything. The shims, I'm going to use the original shims. They seem to be good. I know they're fine. Um, I've just checked that these Woodruff keys slot in everything. But I found here, there's a jam on this one here. I've got to get a little file out and file this off. Because when I put this together, any slight jam and it's jammed for a while. So it's a little bit stressful. Just taking a close look at this housing, this is the top, and this is where this V-ring goes to seal, to stop water coming in. There's, there's a grease seal in there as well, but the V-ring basically holds the water from going in. And obviously the last one failed, and water had been going in, and it's corroded the top of this. So I have a few choices, we either just put it back like this and hope that the grease will keep it out. Buy a new one of these, which I'm definitely not going to do. Uh, we could have it some aluminium welded on top and then taken back down on a milling machine. That sounds fairly complicated. Or I can just pick out these little bits with some acetone to make sure there's no grease in, fill it with some epoxy and then sand it back down again which I think is the route I'm going to take. But I do want to do something about it because this is the Genoa and I can't take the Genoa motor off without cutting the forestay. So this has got to last quite a while. I don't want it leaking. And I think that will leak underneath there. I mean, if I just look at the side, there's clearly a path for water to get through and inside here. The oil sir here should retain it, but I want a double barrier, not a single. So I'm just going to put this on hold for a little bit until I get this done, because that will take an hour or two to clean out these little spots, get some epoxy in and let it dry and then sand it down. Okay, so I've put the epoxy around there. I hope it's filled all the holes. I hope I managed to get the grease out of every hole. So we'll let that dry and then we'll just give it a very careful sand on a dead flat surface to get it back down flush. So with this cog that the key wasn't quite going in there, I just took a very fine square file and very gently filed away the little burr that was there. And this keyway now 
slides in and out just fine. So I just heated this and I'm going to go and get the bit from the fridge now to go in there. So hopefully that has expanded that a little bit to be able to get the bearing in. Okay, so this is cold from the fridge. This is bloody hot. So this in theory should have shrunk and this should have expanded. We go, it's in. It's in! Then you see the bearing it sits in there like that. That's the lower bearing. This one is ready to go up the other end of the main housing when I get that one ready. It's top of the mast. As you can see, there was a lot of corrosion on here where people put different fittings. The Windex fitting was corroded through. Plus, all the water, rainwater, goes into here and down through the middle of the mast. That might be quite convenient for taking the shiv wheels out because you can actually take the shivs out like this and bring them all out to spec them. Uh, but given they haven't been out in 12 years, and I don't intend on taking them out again, I thought we'd put a top on like so. Ray made this out of this very, very high density fibre. It's like rock, but well, it's like aluminium. And it's so hard stuff. So I've put a nice new mast top on. I've drilled the holes for the um, through bolts that hold this down to the mast. These ones are just to hold the top on. The Windex will go onto here. I'm just marking out now where to put this antenna. Before it was hot up against that nut, which was a bit ridiculous. So we're going to move it away from there. And I've got a new um, wind Windex lead because my old one was all corroded in here. Previously, it was right back there, which is a bit silly, really, because okay, it still went out in front of the mast. But when we had the spinnaker up, we had a lot of interference. I can't think of any reason why it shouldn't go further out the front. I mean, what's wrong with it being on the crane like that? I also, whenever I screw this up, I put self amalgamating tape around the whole joint. So here, it was always tricky to get that amalgamating tape around. Whereas up here, it'd be nice and easy to just wrap it around. Always start off with a pilot drill. So I've got one bolt in. Just put a thin bolt through there for now. I've lined it up. I look down here to make sure it's central. Now we'll put the second hole in. So two bolts now. I'll, I could have just drilled and tapped into here, but then that would have been stainless steel into aluminium. And we know the way that goes. That would have just corroded in forever. And if I ever want to get this off, much, much easier if we just have a nut on the bottom. Now, did I line that up properly? Let's have a look. Yep, not bad, not bad at all. That's nice, I like that up there. Mucho better, mucho. The wind instrument is going to sit there. I had to file a little bit of the edges away just to get that curve that was in there so it sits flat. On the underside, I had to cut the bolts so they were slightly shorter. And I have put a little bit of a backing plate. Now this is very expensive stuff. It's white kitchen board stolen from Wana. Actually, she gave it to me and I cut it up and I use it for backing plates for like this. So the theory, there's no stainless steel touching the aluminium at all. And uh, it's a nice little backing plate. On this side, the stainless steel won't be touching the aluminium because it'll be recessed inside here. So the only place it's actually gonna touch is where the threads go through and I'll cover that with lana coat. Everything I can do to try to stop damned corrosion. Okay, so today, time to get this shaft locked into the aqua drive. We're going to do that with this little collet here, which closes as you tighten it around the shaft. What I've been waiting for is this molly coat, which is 50 bucks for that. It's supposed to be a very special dry film lubricant. I have to get this end of the shaft between two and three millimeters from the collet in there. So at the moment it's eight millimeters. I'm gonna use my little tapometer here. See if I can move it back just a little bit, because getting it back out again will be a real problem. 
Okay, that's under three now. As per recommendation from the instructions, yeah, I'm actually reading this Monaco is just horrible stuff. Right, I have done exactly as per instructions. Slot opposite slot. Okay, so we're supposed to have that and this surface clean of our molly coat. Okay, there's the shaft aligned straight north south. This is aligned north south. Now, I presume we just knock the damn thing in until it will go no further, which is probably about there. Now, I have to do these up in a certain order according to the instructions. So I've tightened them all by hand as a certain sequence. I'm going to tighten them loosely with this. One, two, three, four, five, six, two anti-clockwise, seven, eight. So as I'm doing this, it's pulling them together and spreading them out and trapping the shafts against this outer housing. Okay, I've now jammed the propeller. So now we start to talk it up in earnest. Seven. Okay, that's it. We are very much clamped. Good, 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 good. So what we need now is a CV joint coming in here, which is arriving tonight. Then the final adjustment on our gland here. And um, then I think we're done. And for my next trick, the CV joint is back in. Finished. CV joint done. Aqua drive done. PSS seal done. Prop done. Cutlass bearing done. All done, 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 done. So this is the Genoa motor, the top of, after I've put some of that epoxy on the top. It doesn't look particularly pretty, but it's gonna be hidden anyway. And the key thing is, is the pitting is full and the epoxy covers all the bare alloy. So hopefully that'll stop it corroding again and allow the wiper seal to seal around it. I've got everything ready in its place. We'll fit, I've just gotta heat up the bearings. The mandrel is in the fridge. The seals are all on. So this is very cold and this is very hot. Yeah, I think we're good to go. Wiper slips nicely over there. See the oil seal engaging. I hate this bit. Come on, baby, down you go. What aren't you going on? Sure, it shouldn't be that bloody tight. Okay, now it's on, it's just slipping down, of course. Just playing games. Okay. Two shims here. The tolerances are just so tight. They jam so easily. So we've got the Woodruff keys in. Now, let's see if this goes on just as easy this time. No reason why it shouldn't. Yes, perfect. There you go. Let's get the bearing on and let's make sure we get it out on the right way round. Oh, look at this one, just slips on. What the hell is that then? Then the housing, which I've already put the bearing seat in and the oil seal in, I'm just going to give it a test, see how it sits down. Because these bearings are steel, they get the slightest drop of salt water on them, they start corroding immediately. This is the last of my very expensive Selden grease, which is basically just axle grease. Right, Tef gel. Putting plastic over this, so shouldn't, in theory, even need Tef gel. But there's no harm in putting it on, other than the cost of the stuff. 
Now, how should we have this? Like that, I think. So let's put this back on. We should be good to go. Is that seal going to connect? Yep, lovely. Ah, there we go. Right. Loctite. Then halas. Blue Loctite again. I want them hard in there, but I don't want them super hard. You'd use red for super hard. Now, the trick here is to not put them in too tight and just gently do them all up a bit at a time. talk up manual allen key you can start to see the tef gel squeezing outside there which is good so half a turn on these it's gradually going around okay now big question is does it turn relatively smoothly oh, beautiful 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 that feels really nice it's very tight in there so the next task is to get the horizontal section in. See the cog in there, turning around. This bearing is in this side. Why do these bloody things always? Get them just right, they slide in, but get them cockeyed, you're in trouble. Then the motor with a worm drive on it. Let's give this a thorough greasing. I feel like a garage mechanic or a cake maker. Put the icing on the cake. By the way, if you're allergic to grease, this is not the job for you. So we have an O ring on there. Um, okay, what I haven't done is Tef gel. Tef gel, Tef gel, Tef gel, all right. Keep. Now, this goes in here. The trick is, is to put this finger, yes, this finger, in here. Ouch. Catch the winch handle socket and push it through. You put your finger in there to get it through. Okay. Now onto this side. Last but not least, washer goes on there. True arc ring pliers, ring or circlip or retainer, whatever you like to call it. Look at this beautiful new end cap. Okay, the grease is done. Yep, I think that's done. What do you think? Now, question, what's next? What do I have to put on next? Def gel! You got it. Hold on. Lovely Tef gel. Okie cookie. There we go. That's all you need. Just a drip. And just to show that I don't need electric tools all the time, I'll do this one by hand. Oh, thank goodness. These are finished. And that, my good friends, is about it. Let's see if it turns when I... Oh yeah, sweet. It's very smooth. Very, very smooth. Perfect. For those of you from America, these tub of towels I find really good for cleaning up. They're a really effective degreaser. And uh, not too unkind on the hands either. Last but not least on this monster. And uh, ladies and gentlemen, if you'd like to give me marks out of 10 for that, please. There's the Genoa. Cutter. And the mainsail. All serviced. Thank goodness that's done. I hate to say after all that work servicing, it's actually the labels that make it look sexy. Here is the trophy corner. Masthead done. Look at those furlers. Don't they look sexy with all their labels on? Oh, I'm quite proud of those, I have to say. I think everything here is now serviced, ready to go back on. 
final touches on the masthead. I have got us some nice new ship wheels. These ones you would think would be okay, and they probably are, but the hole size in the middle is somewhat different. Actually, they're not too dissimilar, but these old ones are overlized. Anyway, I don't want to be going in this masthead again for quite a while, so I thought I'd change them for the sake of 100 bucks, whatever they cost. A bit ridiculous, 40 bucks, isn't it, for a piece of plastic? But there you go. A little bit of silicon grease, not too much. Okay, then these fit over here. Lovely. Let's do these back ones. Make sure I get these baker light or whether they are separators on either side of the aluminium. Make sure they all run properly. Okay, she wheels, you are in there for another 10 years, so be damn good and do your job. And no coming out again under any circumstance. Now I've put all the brand new hoses on and it's time to see if it actually works. Now normally I'd have to be at the pedestal to uh, make this work, but here I've got my remote control, which we use for furling. So let's make sure I press the right one. We don't get squirted with the hydraulic oil somewhere else. Fingers crossed. Oh, look at that. Fall in. Fall out. No graunching noises. Yes. Okay, let's have a look at the um, Genoa furlers. So I've got the two furlers for the bow set up here. The cutter here and the Genoa there. So the cutter's into its deck fittings here. The Genoa one's deck fittings are inside the anchor locker there. So I just have to make sure this little lever is positioned correctly. That side's if you want to manually winch it. This side's on the hydraulic. So when it's there, the hydraulics are taking command. When it's here, the hydraulics are bypassed uh, and you can turn it with a handle, winch handle. Okay, so cutter out. Out clockwise. Ooh, sounds good, eh? In anti-clockwise. Hmm, I wouldn't say uh, any less noisy than they were. Okay, let's try the Genoa. So out is clockwise. Oh, so this one's going the wrong way, so I've got the hoses the wrong way around. In. Fantastic. Now, I'll be honest with you, I had tried this before I put the camera on, because whenever I had the camera on, nothing ever goes right. So I tried it before I put the camera on, and it had taken like four or five seconds for the oil to get through all those new lines, but they were turning pretty fast, considering the whole thing was rebuilt and those hydraulic lines were actually empty. Okay, let's take them all apart. Stay there and you don't move until September, promise? Yep, this is how we bring things down the side deck. Choo choo! Come on, out of the way camera. Okay, okay. we are back. And that's it, all tested. I'm pretty happy with that. Much better to test them now than uh, later when the mast is up and we find out something's wrong. So, on to the next job. In the next video, part three, we mainly work on the mast. Firstly, reinstalling the two mast fittings for the gooseneck and the bang. 
Installing the new wind instrument cable inside the mast. Re-riveting all six spreaders back together again. Resoldering the masthead navigation light. And finally, we look to improve the way the cabin floorboards are secured down. See you next time.